Number 17 from the 2019 Advanced Higher Maths, 10 mark question on sequences. Specifically, it looks like geometric sequences and series. Well, what does it say? Here are the first three terms just of a sequence. And then it says, when x equals 11, show that those three terms could form the start of a geometric sequence and state the value of the common ratio. So for two marks. Well, I don't need to give them names, but I think I will. When x is 11, that means you've got 55, 63 for the first term. u2 will be negative 22, negative 21. And u3 will be 11, take away the 4, 7. Do they form a geometric sequence? Is the ratio of consecutive terms the same in both cases? If you divide u2 by u1, negative 21 by 63, you get negative a third. What happens if you divide u3 by u2? I don't know if you need to actually show that part. You could just put the numbers down, I presume. That's 7 over negative 21. That's also negative a third. So how would you express that then? Maybe they would just accept that. But then... I'm just going to write this. You've got a common ratio, which means that the series, or rather it's a sequence just now because it's just separate terms, is geometric with r equals negative a third. I don't know if you have to put a statement at the beginning of this saying, or maybe I will. I don't think you'll need to, but I'll put it down. U2 over U1 is equal to U3 over U2, which means you've got a common ratio, which means you've got a geometric sequence. Part B. Given that the entire sequence is geometric, because it could have been some sort of coincidence that the first three terms did that. Given that the entire sequence is geometric, state why the associated series that's when you add them together, has a sum to infinity. Well, since negative a third is a proper fraction, since the absolute value is less than one, or you could put negative a third is between one and negative one, that means that un tends to zero as n tends to infinity, because the terms just get smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that the series approaches a limit. I'm not sure if they just want you to say since that's a proper fraction, then the series is a limit. But the reason is because the terms get smaller and smaller until they just disappear effectively, so there's no more to be added. Do Calculate this sum to infinity. Sum to infinity is simply a over 1 minus r. Maybe I should have finished that. There's the limit as n tends to infinity. Maybe I should have put that in. Well, a is the first term. That was 63. r is negative a third, so it's take away negative a third. So you've got 63 over 4 thirds. Always just going with the answer. I'll put it down. 63 over 4 thirds. So that'll be 3 times the top. 189 upon 4. Part C then, it says there's a second value of x which would also create the start of a geometric sequence. If that's the case, you have to show it has to satisfy this equation. And then go ahead and find the first three terms and then a certain sum. So presumably they're putting that down just to make sure you get that answer for the follow-on marking. Well, if it's geometric, that means that the ratio of consecutive terms 2x, negative 2x plus 1 over 5x plus 8 must be the same. It must be the same as x minus 4 divided by negative 2x plus 1. Specifically, the common ratio is equal to that. Well, solve that. Cross multiply. So you've got negative 2x plus 1 effectively squared is x minus 4 times 5x plus 8. So squaring that's going to give 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. That bit was easy. This is going to give 5x squared minus a 32, that's minus 20 plus 8, 
minus 12x. And then bring it over to this side, reading it that way around. Of course, it just gives you that, doesn't it? Take that away, that will leave you x squared. Bring that across as a plus 4, it'll be a minus 8x. Bring that across as a minus 1, and it's minus 33. Now, find the first three terms for this second value of x. It's really have said, find the, state the second value of x. Well, that's not going to solve that. x, x, three elevens, that'll do nicely. Must be minus the eight, but plus the three. So now you've got this, either x is negative three or x equals 11. So that means it's x is negative three is that second value because you already had x equals 11. And if that's the case, then the first three terms are this. u1 will be negative 15 plus the 8, negative 7. u2 will be 6 plus the 1 is 7. And u3 would be, where am I? Negative 3, take it before, negative 7. Look, alternating terms, but it doesn't ask for that. What does it say next? Find the first three terms, then 3. State the value of S2n and justify your answer. The sum of the first two n terms. <clears throat> There's only one mark left. From here you can see that r is equal to negative 1. So all that's going to happen is these terms are going to alternate negative 7, 7, negative 7, 7. If you add a pair of terms together it comes to 0. So the total is either going to come to 0 or negative 7. There's only two possible sums. Negative 7 if there's an odd number, 0 if there's an even number, so that must equal 0 since there, I don't know much you have to write for this, are an even number of terms. And the pairs of terms Negative 7 plus 7 add up to 0. Would that do it? Have I explained that well enough? <clears throat>